My name is Nick Ferrand and these are my Italian One Take Property Tours. Good, uh, good morning to you, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, this is a story which I wanted to tell and I'm going to do this story in three parts because I think it's really important and I think it's an incredible story and I hope you enjoy this. So um, this is a story about one man and this man is called Anthony Clark and he was a British officer in World War II in 1944. And I have a picture of him. Let's see whether I can show you that. Let me put that down for a second. I wonder if you can see um, that distinguished chap just there. Now, this is not only a story about Anthony Clark, but this is a story about, or actually about one painting. And that painting is painted by Piero della Francesca in 1450. Um, and that painting is in San Sepulcro. Now, just to get more exciting, um, in my view, one of the most important writers of the 20th century is a chap called Aldous Huxley. Um, and I'm sure a number of people who are watching this video have read a number of his books. Um, one in particular, and probably the most famous, is Brave New World. Um, and that is just so fitting for what I'm about to tell you. 1944, Tony Clark, Anthony Clark, British officer in the artillery regiment, came to this place about four or five miles away from San Sepulchre. Aldous Huxley, in 1925, wrote an essay when he came to San Sepulchre, which I have here, which I will actually post in the description below, saying that basically the resurrection of Christ by Piero della Francesca was the most beautiful painting in the world. Now, British Army directive was basically to bomb towns. Don't worry about the architecture, which you know I love, but just bomb the hell out of them. Don't worry about the casualties. I mean, this is a world war. So what they would do is that they'd bring these chaps up about five miles, three miles away from the town, bombard the town, blow it up with no discrimination, and basically then the Nazis would retreat and the Allied forces, forces will uh, move forward and then basically take the town, liberate the town or what is left of it, and that's how it went, so on and so forth. However, Anthony Clark, who had read the essay by Aldous Huxley of a painting which is in San Sepulchre, right, called The Resurrection of Christ, and said that this was the most beautiful painting in the world, knew what was inside the town and disobeyed orders and stopped the bombardment for about 24 hours. And now that is just the most incredible story that he saved a medieval village, saved one of the most amazing Renaissance paintings, right? And at great peril to himself. So today's video is going to be split into three parts. The first part is what I'm talking about now, which is this just incredible story. The second part is going to be my one take property tour. And the third part is going to be a walk around San Sepulchre as it is today, knowing in the knowledge that one man saved this most amazing, amazing medieval village from total destruction. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. See you in part two. Thank you. So here we are in San Sepulchre. And before we go on to this one take property tour, I just want to do this. Are you listening? Can you hear this? I can hardly get my hands around this tree. Now it's not a redwood, but it's got to be at least 200 years old. And we are on the edge of San Sepulchre. And this is a private garden for a 16th century villa, which has been divided into seven apartments. Now, some are rented at this moment in time. The prices of the apartments are 320,000 to 595,000. And we are going to have a look at the most expensive apartment today. Some, as I mentioned, some are rented um, and we won't be able to get in to see those. But the garden is just amazing. I can hear the church bells ringing. 
and uh, let's pin up the camera. Let's 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 get on with it because I'm uh, just oh, here. We go. Uh, now you can hear some noise because basically we're on the edge of a, the town of San Sepulchro and we're in Tuscany today. And I'm just going to pan around so you can see this spectacular walled private garden and as I come around um, there's the old castle which is over here and then if I come back and we will walk down a little bit over there and I'm just going to show you what a beautiful garden now this garden is protected um, and just over here just in there uh, there is a gate and you open that gate and you walk out and you are right next to Porto Romano and this building here, which you can see just there, that's the police station. Now, let's get around here. Uh, yeah. Any bamboo, lots of bamboo. Now, this building was built in uh, the 16th century and it was remodeled in the 18th century. Um, and the apartment which we're going to look at today has absolutely beautiful um, frescoes, uh, which I absolutely adore. I just hear an appy. You can hear it because it's two-stroke. Now look at this. If I come down here. Now the service charges range for, depending on the size of the apartment, between 200 and 300 euros a month. Let's get out of this flare. Here you go, slowly does it. I look at that for a majestic 16th century villa. I just think it's, Absolutely stunningly beautiful. Now it's been uh, fully restored. It's got a beautiful water feature, a waterfall. Now just see if I can pull up and show you. Now you can see the modern world, which is outside, um, just outside here and on the left-hand side, there's a um, big shopping center uh, with a supermarket and one can quite easily walk there um, and the there's private parking for every house and there's electric gates which are at the end but let's just get in Just going to turn the light off for a sec. I mean, look at this as your entrance to your apartment. It's absolutely divine. Look at the flooring. Chic personified. That's what I would say. Right. You've got two apartments on the ground floor, but I just want to show you this. Are you ready? Pan up. Look at that staircase, counter-levered staircase, going up with a beautiful skylight at the top. Now we are going on to the first floor which is the Piano Nobile and uh, let's just walk up there. Look at these guys. Isn't that lovely? Pull back into the corner and you get a better idea of the staircase. Oh, it's just stunning. Yeah, the 
common areas are absolutely divine. This building's got to be over 10,000 square feet. Can you imagine when it was just one house? There's an apartment downstairs. And that used to be the billiard room. Right, so here we go. Apartment, you come in and you come into an entrance room and it's got an automatic light. I'm just gonna pull around. Okay, and then you've got a beautiful front door, and I'll show you in a second. And you pop through, and these floors, which are terracotta tiles, and have been painted. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. All right, let's pop into what would be your reception room. All the frescoes are original. And I'm just gonna pull the camera up so you can see this. Now, I asked to do this apartment because it's facing south. Um, and so it's going to be the brightest, um, potentially out of all the apartments. And you might think those are pictures on the walls, but they are frescoes. But the trade-off is that you will hear some noise from, not a lot, but there will be some. I need to come down and show you these floors because I can feel that they're all original and undulating, but I just want to show you that. Can you imagine the amount of work it would have taken to actually paint those. Just amazing. Amazing. Now, I think, well, this is going to be the kitchen, but I think that these are relayed salvage 13 by 15 centimeter terracotta tiles. What beautiful light is streaming in from these windows. Just stunning. And here, this room has been predisposed as, I don't really see that. See that down there? As the kitchen. So this will be the kitchen. And I know that because if I come down here, I can see that this tube here, and when you see a tube and it's in yellow, it means that, that it's a gas pipe. Lovely colours that they've used. Now this is really interesting. In a grand villa of this, they would have had a separate staircase. It might be a bit dark out here for the servants. And if I, is there a light? Let's see, is there a light? Yes, there is a light. But look how beautiful that is. Just is absolutely stunning. Just 
just going to go through and then drop the camera down. Now there's a cantina downstairs and each apartment has its own storage space. What a beautiful staircase. Lovely, uh, lovely doors and uh, really lovely colours actually. Now this apartment is on the market for 595,000 euros and it's a pretty bold price to be honest with you but really if you wanted history and you had the money I mean, it's just gorgeous. You know, you wanted to basically be secure. Well, you can't be any more secure than actually being able to shout at the police station, but... Uh, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Then... You know, if you're next time you're in Italy, I, and this house is available and it's within your budget, there might be some wiggle room. I would definitely want to come and have a look at this. Now, although that we've got basically a road leading in, a small road leading into town, you do benefit from this stunning terrace. Look at that. Obviously that you have new houses which have been built around you. And then just over here, there is a staircase which leads down into the garden. And if I pull around, um, I can show you, slowly does it, the back of the villa. Yeah, you could have basically your barbecue out here. I mean, obviously you've got the, the private communal garden outside. All right, had to say it, the camera will adjust. Now we're back in There are beautiful doors, absolutely beautiful, the way that they've been crafted. And they're all original. I mean, look at this room, it's just stunningly beautiful. New radiators. Now this apartment has two bedrooms. Um, I can see a video entry machine, which is there. And I'm going to pop into bedroom one. Absolutely gorgeous windows. High ceilings. And I'm just going to push the uh, camera over and it will adjust and it will show you the garden where we started the video. There's Bruno. And uh, I work with Bruno a lot. Uh, Bruno Koleski from Aptodomus and he is a absolutely lovely chap. And I've got a lot of time for Bruno. Look at that. I, it's really is stunningly beautiful. Now, you might be saying to me, where's the closets? And uh, I'm going to tell you, there aren't any. <laughs> okay, so 
en suite, bidet, toilet, sink, and then if I pull up, you can hear potentially the extractor fan working, um, and basically you've got the continuation of the room with the beautiful frescoes. And if I come down, interesting color in this room from the lamp, but I can't really do much about that at this moment in time. And then just there, you've got a shower and some travertine backing. And I would potentially want to be looking at putting a glass surround in that. Right, what's in there? Okay, let's just open that. What's in there? Light, ah, excellent, okay. So here you've got a new combination boiler and uh, the flues are going out through the building and I can see that this is going to be your laundry room um, because it's uh, already plumbed in for a washing machine. Okay, just to turn that light off. That is a new wall. All the houses are in regular, as they say in Italian, which means that basically it's all got all the certificates and you're ready to go. Now, this room is filled with uh, quite a lot of antique furniture, but again, it has the most amazing frescoes on the painted ceiling and uh, it's a jolly big room and I'm gonna lift up and just show you that. Potentially, in my view, it's the best house in the building because basically you've got a window which is facing um, probably, I mean, almost due east. Uh, south is behind us um, and west is that way. So you're going to get light all day. And then if you pop in here, look at the light streaming through. And then you go into, I would have thought this would be the principal bedroom and bathroom. And then you have a really jolly nice sink, a bath, a shower, a bidet. And uh, that strips of travertine, which have been put together. Oh, I think that's really nice. I'm going to pull down and have a look at that so I can show you here. Right. And then it's got a new travertine. I just opened the window because I just want to show you the light coming through there. There you are. Gorgeous. I just actually get the camera out of there slowly. Oh. Right, when that tree is in leaf, you won't actually see any of those houses which are around. A beautiful day today. Right, I'm going to do my level best to get details of this property onto our website. Um, and uh, before this property, this uh, video is published, which will uh, be at the weekend and hopefully uh, um, you'll be able to get further information on the sizing and uh, specification. Um, if you have a question about it, please email the office at info at abodeitaly.com. Just absolutely beautiful restoration. So here we are in San Sepulcro and I am standing um, just at the beginning of Via Piero della Francesca. Right, this is the road of 
Pio de la Francesco, and I'm just going to pull down so you can get an idea of how beautiful this road is. Now, I have Mackie with me, and uh, Mackie, <laughs> because a lot of you have asked for Mackie to come along, and he is tied to me, and he wants to go somewhere, so <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going to happen or how we're going to do this, but uh, I'm going to try to do it to the best of my ability. Now, so as we walk down on all these beautiful cobble streets, we're going to turn right now, and I'm going to show you the house where Piero Francesco used to live. Mackie, come on, this way. Calm down. Calm down. As I mentioned before, he gets so scared. If he hears a bang, that's it, he's off. Now, here is the house where Piero della Francesca used to live. I just pulled up so that the, uh, it will change a little. Um, and he actually died in this house. Now, he painted two pictures, one which was in the uh, first floor, which is called the Piano Nobile, um, and that was a huge fresco. I'm just going to pull over to have a look, and it says here. And that was a picture of Hercules. Um, and if you want to see that picture, uh, it was sold in 1908 and it is now in Boston, in the museum. Now, the last picture he did paint was a scene of the nativity, and that picture, if you're in the UK, is at the National Gallery. I mean, what an amazing town this is. It really is absolutely stunningly beautiful. So. Let's continue with our story and what do we have? We have a captain in the artillery regiment who read an essay by, well, in my view, one of the greatest writers of the 20th century, Aldous Huxley, and was approximately three or four miles away with a whole battery of heavy guns and disobeyed an order, potentially at his own peril, and potentially a court-martial, which potentially could have led to his execution. And one had disobeyed orders at that point. I just, uh, what an incredible brave man Tony Clark was. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. So, you know, the connection is just phenomenal as well. You've got, you know, one of the most famous Renaissance artists, a captain in the British army in World War II, uh, who was gay. Uh, and which I think is just an incredible story on its own. And Aldous Huxley, which, as I said, was probably one, or if not the greatest writer of the 20th century. Now I'm just gonna pop down here into the main square. And you're gonna get some flair. And I can't, I'm just gonna go across because I'm basically in the via the 20th of September, and I'm just going to pull out of the sun so you can see the square, and I'm sorry about that, that you're going to get a bit of flare. Come on, Mac. Yes, boy, sit down, sit down for a second. Sit down, sit, sit down. Here he is. Mackie, say hello to everybody. Yes, you're such a beautiful dog. Right, here we go in the main square. So, okay, here we are, 1944. Germans have evacuated the town. Dear old Tony Clark was outside giving direct orders to bomb the city, or bomb the town, sorry. Um, he withheld uh, for 24 hours by doing so, at which time the Germans have retreated um, and they enter the town with um, absolutely no casualties whatsoever. Uh, you know, and if I was the mayor of this town, you know, they named a street after Tony Clark. 
you know, but I would want to have a statue, personally. I want to celebrate this man's life because, you know, as you know, I love architecture. Come on, Mac, where are you going? And uh, I, I think that whole period uh, of the 20th century was just a, a travesty, in my view. But I do want to show you this, because in this square, in the middle of this square, where that uh, advertising is, no, where that uh, plinth is in the middle, there used to be a beautiful tower, which, is, uh, which was um, uh, constructed in the 11th century. In fact, I'm going to show you these pictures here. Look, if I look up, see that? That was the tower which was in the middle of the square. Uh, isn't that incredible? When was that taken? Okay, it says here it was built in 900, but then there's another one here that says it was built in 30, 11, 30 something. And if you see here, look, if I lift up here. Now that was after on the five o'clock in the morning on the 31st of July, 1944, the Germans was using it as an observation post and they blew the whole thing up. I mean, isn't that a shame? Isn't that a great shame? But look at this. This is a picture of a guy walking across here, which was done in the 1930s on a tightrope. And uh, look at all the people of the town that's come out. Really, absolutely fantastic. Now, if you want to see the um, picture of the resurrection of Christ, um, I've already made, um, I've picked up the details. I went to the museum this morning and the museum is just up here from the main square onto the left-hand side. Um, uh, you can find it online as well uh, if you want to. Um, and, uh, and wait one second. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can uh, give this chap a little bit of money. One sec. Here you go. Rebeni. Okay. Very good. Right, I'm going to walk along the main square. Come on, Mickey, come with me. Because what I love about these towns, um, apart from the architecture, is that here that you can still find basically um, family businesses. Um, admittedly, that you have, you know, other companies as well. But I mean, normally, basically, you, you will find family businesses which are here. And here is a classic example of what is the beauty of Italy and here you have a butcher's isn't that amazing and here you have the family baker and I brought along a candlestick <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I just, I just had to. I just, I just have to. Mackie, you've got me all tangled up, son. Here you go. Right. So, look, I hope you enjoyed the three parts of this video. It's been a story which I have wanted to tell for an awful long time. Um, I think it's just an amazing story. I, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post um, the link uh, to the essay which you can read. Um, I'm going to post a details um, for a BBC article uh, which was written um, about um, Anthony Clark, which I also think is wonderful. Um, and I'm going to post a link to the museum. I'm just going to walk over here because I think uh, it's the happy bar, a happy bar. And this is basically in the main square and this little alimentari, this little shop here in COVID. Um, they were so nice, they used to deliver things um, to us because I live in this town and I think it's absolutely just amazing. I'm going to put the camera down just there. Okay, Mac, let's put that camera down there. Right, boy. There you go. You come up here with me so you can say hello to everybody. Hi. Yes. 
What an incredible story. Isn't life amazing? I just, uh, it just warms my heart. And uh, I think that basically the courage of people are absolutely phenomenal, really. And art, you know, and writing and, and life is good, isn't it? You know, thank you so much for coming along this journey with me. I hope you enjoy this. This is a video which I've been trying to make for a very long time. Um, if you would like further information of anything which I've mentioned today, just send me an email at info at um, If you haven't subscribed, please do all those things and that will make me really happy. Give me a like and that would be absolutely fantastic. And uh, I'll see you next week on the next one. Say goodbye. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye from Mackie and me. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.